Hello, my name is Yuku Makura. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the hammering test with Otosaki products. The hammering test is one of the methods for measuring vibrations. As you know, vibration causes various problems. Unnecessary vibration will make people uncomfortable, affect product quality, and reduce the machine life. Therefore, it is very important to control vibrations. If you want to control vibrations, it is necessary to know the frequencies at which the measuring object easily vibrates. That is to say, natural frequency. In the hammering test, you can use the impulse hammer, an accelerometer, and F50 analyzer to measure the natural frequency. The equipment used in this video is here. DS3200 F50 analyzer, GK3100 impulse hammer, NC3211 accelerometer, and laptop. And we have an aluminium plate as the measuring object. We put it on the cushioning material that it can vibrate freely. First thing we're gonna do is connect each equipment. First, I'm gonna take this USB cable into the USB connector at the D3000 and my laptop. And then I'm gonna take the impulse hammer and connect it into the channel 1. And then I'm gonna take the accelerometer and connect it into the channel 2. Once you have them connected, then connect the power cable to the DS3000 and turn on the power here. You will hear the relay sound. And I'm gonna take this USB license key connecting to my computer for running the application software. Then I'm gonna take the accelerometer and mount it on the aluminium plate with petrol wax. Now let's take a look at the software. First thing we're gonna do is open a new project. And then I'm gonna set the number of glass to be displayed. Click this icon to see a table like this. Let's set it to 2 by 3. Okay then, I'm gonna set the type of waveform for each glass. Click this graph and set it to the time axis waveform of channel 1. Okay. Channel 1. And click this graph and set it to the power spectrum of channel 1. Channel 1 power spectrum. Okay, then click this graph and set it to the time axis waveform of channel 2. Time. Channel 2. Click this graph and set it to the power spectrum of channel 2. Power spectrum and channel 2. And click this and set it to FRF. FRF stands for Frequency Response Function. And here I'm gonna set it to the Coffee Lens Function. Next, I'm going to turn on CCLD to supply power to the impulse hammer and accelerometer. Click OK. The sensor is now powered. And then, I'm going to set the sensitivity value as well as units for the impulse hammer and accelerometer. First, check the boxes of the channels you want to use. And then I'm gonna set the unit name. Newton for hammer and meter per square second for accelerometer. 
and here we're going to set the sensitivity. The sensitivity value is described in the calibration chart which is supplied with each sensor. For example, you will see at the calibration chart of an impulse hammer that the impulse hammer outputs a voltage of 2.37 mV per Newton. So enter this value in the software. and click start and then make sure that the y-axis unit is set next I'm gonna set the window function rectangular are usually used for hammering test next I'm gonna set the voltage range what we're gonna do first is display the voltage range indicator. Next, adjust the voltage range by doing some test hits. If the AD over lamp lights up, you need to lower the voltage range. Next, I'm gonna set the measurement start trigger. Polygon function enables you to capture and enter your web form in the FFT window. First, set the trigger mode to repeat. And then display the trigger setting window. I'm gonna set the trigger signal to channel 1 impulse hammer and then specify the trigger position and level by doing some test hits. In order to capture entire web form, better to set the trigger position to the left hand as much as possible. Here, I'm gonna set the trigger position to minus 30 and the trigger level to 5%. Now, let's check the trigger operation. Press the trigger button, and then press the start button. Now measurement is ready. Let's hit the aluminium with the hammer and you will see the captured waveform by trigger function. Next, I'm gonna set the frequency range. First, temporarily set it to 4 kHz. Next, I'm gonna set up the average condition. Set the average mode to power spectrum average. And then I'm going to set the average processing condition to the count. The average number of time is set to 3. Next, in order to set the appropriate frequency range, we have to know the upper limit of the frequency band that can be excited with the hammer. The upper limit of the frequency that can be excited changes depending on the hardness of the target object, the type of hammer, and the material of the impact tip. So now, let's see how to know the upper limit of the frequency. First. Change x-axis scale of the channel 1 power spectrum graph to the log. 
click graph and right click x axis scale setting and switch it to log scale then click trigger button average button and start button and I'm gonna hit it with a hammer to start measurement since the average number of times is set to 3, I will hit 3 times. Since I cannot capture entire waveform here, I'm gonna set the sampling point to 4096. And then press this button, and this button, this button, and start measurement again. Okay, now the measurement is completed. And please take a look at the channel 1 power spectrum waveform. You can see that the graph is sloping down to the light. The place where the power of excitation is minus 20 dB down from the flat band is a guideline of the upper limit of the excitation range. Select delta here and place the cursor on the flat part of the waveform. Then click the delta key and move it to the point where dy becomes minus 20 dB. Oh, I need to change this partial overall to the delta y. Okay, then click here. Personal setting. And y axis display format. Change to this. And let's see the delta x here. It is the upper limit of the frequency that can be excited. So I'm gonna set the frequency range to 1 kilohertz this time. Now I'm gonna do a hammering test and acquire data. Click trigger, oblige and start and then hit the aluminium plate with the hammer a set number of times that's all and I was able to get the data of the frequency response function please take a look here the peak part is the natural frequency of the aluminium plate. Please check the coherence function graph and confirm that it is close to 1. The closer it is to 1, the more causative the impact force and the response acceleration. And click file and you can see project and also you can see data like this and you can copy this graph right click copy paste here That's all of this video. Thank you for watching.